Let's give a warm applause for Elena Gontefa. Fly me to the moon, let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, baby, kiss me. Hi everyone, how are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> Ooh, okay, uh, I'm Elena Gantova and I'm very excited to be here with you today. I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and making this whole journey for us. So let's applause them. Thank you guys, you're amazing. And before we start, I would like to quickly introduce myself by sharing something funny with you. When I was little, I wanted to be, or I thought I wanted to be a professional ballerina. <laughs> well, I have become a software developer, which is a what like some kind of a badass ballerina that drinks a lot of coffee. <laughs> and I don't know how this happened. Now, I work as a software engineer at Progress, can do UI for Angular, and okay, I need a connection, Chris. Sorry. Yes, not connection. <laughs> yes, thank you. And what we do at Can Do Angular team is delivering pure Angular components which are highly performant and let you take full advantage of Angular framework capabilities. So yes, basically, this is how my days go by. I love my job. I love the CSS in my job. Well, who doesn't? How many CSS lovers do we have here today? Woo! Louder, louder! Come on, CSS is awesome! <laughs> Yay, I'm not alone. And I do ballet after working hours. And if I go to a party, I am that kind of person who makes friends with a dog. <laughs> I'm a dog person, and this is my buddy Zara. She was really supportive during the preparation for this conference. And speaking for conferences, last year was fantastic, full of many events and workshops. And the best closing one for me was the NG Girls Workshop at Sofia, Bulgaria where I had the pleasure of being a mentor. And today, being here with you at Frontend Developer Love is my best start for one great Angular year. So thank you, and now let's get started. Today, I'm going to talk about reactive Angular animations, and I will provide you with some background on how you can build and control animations using RxJS, SVG, and Angular Animation Builder model. I would like to walk you through some UX concepts in animations, which I think are important, and I will support them with some coding examples. At the end, we will walk through all the Animation Builder goodies we have in the Angular world. So why animations are so important? You know that life is a constant motion, and we cannot imagine our daily routine without any movement. And actually, the term animation has an ancient origin, and it started a long time ago when people tried to express motion with carvings or paintings, and of course, later with cartoon movies, which I like a lot. <laughs> And today, motion is a key component in the digital products we use every day. And why do users love motion so much? Mostly because animations make a perception close to what we have when we interact with the physical world around us. And this certainly makes our users satisfied. And to keep that, 
The animations in our UI require a thoughtful approach and always, always, always a clear purpose. So why we should animate? Because it is problem solving. You know, if you have more complicated operations in your UI that users should go through to get their job done, animations can be a great of a help for guiding them. We have improved UX and UI, and we have smooth transitions between the states in our application because no one likes blinking. And we have eye pleasing UI because animations are beautiful. Last but not least, we have user satisfaction and fun. Animations are fun to watch and fun to build, and I will show you that today. And as people are mostly visually driven, animations are a very powerful way of making a product more clear, simple, and user-centered, always providing a positive user experience. This is why when we animate, we have to avoid surprising transitions and make the general feedback from the UI feels natural. And there are many UX concepts on this topic, but some of them I will show you today. First, we have animations that enable micro-interactions. Those animations, they make the interaction quick and clear for the user, and they are often imitating real physical interactions such as opening doors or pushing buttons, or anything that gives an immediate visual feedback to the users. Next, we have animations showing progression. Those animations, they are demonstrating the stage of a process. For example, how far the process is executed, and they activate user expectations on when and how one will get the results done. Next, we have clarifying animations, and they prompt our users on how to deal with the application. They can engage them to take further steps in more complicated operations, and this certainly improves the level of usability of our product. And last, <laughs> we have decorative animations, and yes, this is my dog, and the decorative animations are just super fun and always a good way of attracting users' attention, just like how I am attracting my dog's attention with this traditional Bulgarian sausage called Tukanka. <laughs> and those animations, they don't have any vital features for a successful or failing operation, but they make the general UI more interesting and eye-pleasing. Okay, for the demos today, we are going to use Angular Material. Some of you may know what Angular Material is. It is a set of Angular components which are designed following the material design specifications. Uh, they are implementing the best UX techniques, and what is cool about Angular Material is that we can very easily and fast bootstrap a beautiful Angular application. Next, we are going to use RxJS and Y Reactive. You know, when we use or build an application, we constantly react to changes. And reactive paradigm of programming is giving us async data streams, which are a sequence of ongoing events. And those events, they have hooks, which we can observe on and react on. And this is a very powerful way of making full-blown animated UI. Next, we are going to use SVG, or Scalable Vector Graphics. And as the name says, it scales on all display sizes because it is built with math. And this is pretty cool for those of us who constantly support responsive design and tone in screen resolutions. Yeah. SVGs are really small file sizes, and they have pretty good browser support. What is cool about SVG is that it is very easy to be animated because you just put it there, everything is in the DOM, select whatever part you want from it, and just attach the animation. Now, let's go through some Angular Animations history. Angular Animations got introduced back in Angular 2 release, and they're built on top of the standard Web Animations API. 
While Angular 4.2 comes to us with whole new wave of animation features and very rich animations API, Angular 6 added CSS fallbacks automatically to those legacy browsers that do not support animations natively. And this is pretty cool. So today, in the Angular world, we have full state observations, translations, and router animations. We are going to use Angular Animation Builder model today, which is an injectable service. And once injected within a component or a directive, it produces animation sequence programmatically. So we have first programmatic build, and then a player object is returned. And with this player object, we have full control of the execution of our current animation. OK, are you ready for action? Here, here is our first demo. I'm going to show you decorative animations with micro interactions. And we're facing a user problem here. And our user says, I want to see the immediate effects of my action. OK. I'm going to show you how we can query for inner elements and control animation time gaps by simply using query and stagger. So we have this pretty cute button, and it has eyes. And those eyes, they are following my mouse. And if I click it, it gives me love. <laughs> or actually, an immediate visual feedback of my click action. OK, let's go through the code. We have, in a separate TypeScript file, our animations. And here, we have defined two animations. The first one is responsible for the eyes rotation. And this animation function accepts a rotation angle as a parameter, which is calculated in the component. The second animation is used when I click the button. First, we have to hide the eyes of the button and make the hearts visible. And after that, we have to hide the hearts and return back the eyes of the button. We do that by playing with the opacity and transform properties of the elements. OK, for both animations, we are using query function here. Query function collects one or more inner elements within the element our player object is attached to. And with keyframes, we can define a list of animation steps that the element will have at certain times. And Finally, to make a delay between the right and the left heart of the button, because you see, when I click it, we have first the right one visible, and shortly after that, the left one. To create that delay, we are using stagger. And what stagger does is to create animation timing gap between each query item is being animated. And this is how we can define beautiful animations. So let's go in our components code. Our first job here is to import our animations. Next, we have to inject the animation builder in our component constructor. We will need the animation element and the imported animation to create our player object. So to avoid code repetition, I have implemented a helper method called player4, which will use the builder, build my animation, which I pass to it, and will return an instance to of, of the player object. And finally, to tie everything together, we are going to use ArcGS for subscribing to the click and mouse move events. So for every move or click, we will play the corresponding animation. Additionally, we can use throttle time to limit the events rate execution. And this is good because we can improve the performance and prevent from nervous clicking on the button that can cause some undesired behaviors. And as a result, we have this 
beautiful loving button. <laughs> okay, let's go back to my slides and we have second demo here and I'm going to show you animations showing progression, this concept. And again, we are facing a user problem because, you know, users, they all have problems. And our user says, I want to know that an action is in progress or how long it will take. Good. I'm going to show you how we can query for inner elements within animation steps sequentially or in parallel. So what I mean by sequentially is that we can define animations that can be executed one by one in a sequence. We are going to use query, sequence, and group methods. So here in this demo, we will notify users that a process has begun after clicking this counter button. Then we will keep them updated on its progress and finally let them know that the process has finished. And to indicate available actions, we will apply animation on the button and these arrow elements. In this demo, I am using Angular Material Spinner component for the SVG spinner. Okay, what is left for us is to define two animations. We go to our animation type script file. And one, we have one animation for hiding the button, which indicates the beginning of the process. And the second one is for showing the button one the pro once the process has completed. We are doing this by changing the visibility, transform, and background color of each query item here. And changes in the styles for each query selector could be applied and animated either sequentially or in parallel by using sequence and group methods. So you see, when I click the button of my show animation, I have a parallel animation on both button and arrow elements. And they're showing together on my screen. But if I use here sequence, you can see that we have defined a sequential animation and we will have first the button and shortly after that, the arrow. Okay, in our app component here, we have three things to react on. The first one is the click of the button. So for every click, we will make a request to our task service, which simulates an imaginary backend here for my demo's purposes. The second thing is the updates coming from, from this task service. And we will use them to visualize the progression on the spinner. And finally, the end of the process. Once completed, we will reset the progress and increment the counter of the button. In our progress spinner component code, once again, we have to import our animations and, of course, inject the animation builder in our component constructor. Then, every time the loading state of the components changes, we will create an instance of our player object and play the corresponding animation. And this is how we can control and showing process and stage of a process by using RxJS and animations. We have this as a result. Okay, I'm going to jump to my slides and we have last demo for today. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, we have qualifying animations and of course the user problem. I don't want my application screen to be a mess. In this last demo, I am going to show you how we can build reusable sub animations and multiple elements within an animation. We are going to use surprise, surprise animation and use animation functions. And okay, let's jump to the code. So in this demo, I'm going to show you how you can be like James in five simple steps. 
So first, you have to eat well because good food is good mood. Next, you have to train hard and, of course, work harder. After that, you have to love animals because they're just like potato chips and it is hard to have only one. And at the end, you can see an image of James and his buddy Marley. <laughs> okay, I will restart that to see. And here in this demo, we will apply animation on this SVG arrow. It will guide us through the steps and prompt us on taking the next one. Such guiding animations can be very useful when we have big forms that collect a lot of, lots of, lots of user data. In our animations file, we have reusable sub-animations. And the animation responsible for this SVG arrow is called Next Step Animation. It is a combination of two other animations. The first one is called Color Animation, and it is applying the filling color and visibility of the SVG arrow. The second one is called Stagger Color Animation, and it is using the first one, Color Animation, by simply invoking it with Use Animation method, and it adds Stagger to it to create an animation timing gap. So here, we can define animations with animation and use them with use animation methods. And this is how we can reuse those animations. We can pass parameters and make them really flexible. And in our component, we have, we have the same logic as we did in the previous demos. Okay, going back to my slides. So what are the animation builder goodies we have here? And we have full and easy wall level control over the states in our components. We have reusable animations between the components, which is cool because our components code is smaller and this certainly improves the, the code readability. And you can check those great resources on this topic for further readings and deep dive into Angular animations. And, oops, I lied, we have one more demo, and this is my last message to you, that when we animate, we have to be careful because natural motion matters. And we won't go through the code, but you can check it later. It's on my GitHub, I am on the slides. And we have a ballerina effect here. So let's see that ballerina. Okay, this is a SVG ballerina and we are going to make her dance. So maybe basic practice? Oh no. Oh no, this is awful. Uh, no one has that legs or the, ability, the abilities, I guess. And this is so not natural, so we have to fix the poor ballerina. Let's fix that and make her dance like a normal person. Okay, better, right? <laughs> Good. What about the other leg? Good girl. Okay, okay. She's doing great, right? Okay, we're going to make her shake it, which is very difficult for a ballerina. I'm telling you that, guys. It's, it's really difficult. And, of course, what is the ballerina without a rotation? Yay. Okay, you can check the code later. So, thank you, thank you all, thank you for your attention. And... <laughs> you can find me at Twitter or GitHub or anywhere here for the next couple of days. And I will be waiting to catch up with you and tell me your questions. Thank you once again. Thank you, Elena.